This is the 2024 Toyota 4Runner Limited. If you're looking for an SUV, then this 4Runner offers you all of the ruggedness you could hope for in an SUV, packaged with the premiums of sleek design and features. Enjoy heated leather seats, a sunroof, and a JBL speaker system, all while being outfitted with Toyota Safety Sense components, plus a 5,000 pound towing capacity. With the 2024 4Runner Limited, you'll be able to drive in style without having to sacrifice all of the traits you love in an SUV. Today, we're taking Alex DiCarlo for a ride. The 6 foot 1 Ford joined Roto last spring as a rookie, and the Niagara Falls native has 7 goals and 16 assists so far this year. Alex, how's it going, man? Yeah, how are we doing? Doing well, doing well. Good to see you. I'm Mitch Stewart, and this is Driving with the Dogs. Thanks yeah, for joining me, man. No problem. Thanks Let's for having get me. You, uh, get you all strapped in, ready to go, ready for a little drive with the dogs here. Oh, yeah. This is a beauty. I know. This they got us in the, the nice fancy forerunner today. Wow. You joined the Rail Yard Dogs last spring at the end of your college career at SUNY Oswego. What kind of went in to your decision, your choice to come play here in Roanoke for the Rail Yard Dogs last March? Yeah, so Brems uh, shot me a text a few days after our season ended. And uh, I know just from guys like Broman and stuff, they played here. I think Carter Allen was here as well. And then I knew Josh Nenendahl, he was here as well. So that definitely helped uh, knowing some guys that have been here and kind of hearing all the right stuff from guys like that. So I know Broman was kind of talking with Brems a little bit and he was uh, definitely a major reason of how I got here. So um, yeah, kind of just worked out. You mentioned kind of some of the connections between Roanoke and SUNY Oswego. There's a whole lot of Lakers that have ended up finding themselves down here in Roanoke at some point. Travis Broman, head coach Dan Brenner, played there for a season. Josh Nittedal played there. Is it kind of one of those things that towards the end of your college playing days that Roanoke is maybe kind of already on your radar with Travis having played here, with some of your other teammates having played here? What's kind of the, I guess, official or unofficial connection between Oswego and Roanoke? Yeah, I think just kind of having people that have that you know that have been here and they kind of you hear the good things like I was saying definitely helped and and yeah I mean once you know like kind of the guys that you're friends with at Oswego they've been here and I mean they know they've enjoyed it so it's definitely good to hear from my side um, especially coming to a new team so late in the season like can be tough so having someone you know here and stuff is is always good. You were a rookie coming into a team right in the playoff push. Mm -hmm. One of the more unique experiences, I think, as far as starting your pro career, getting thrown right into the thick of it, new team, new locker room. What was that like for you as you were kind of trying to maybe find your footing a little bit here in Roanoke on a team that was about to go on a pretty long playoff run? Yeah, I mean, it's never easy coming to a new team, especially so late. But, I mean, the guys the guys are so great to me and kind of, you know, I was a rookie, but I felt like I've been here, you know, most of the year so um, that was definitely an easy transition for me and I mean just seeing the, the commitment from the guys and kind of learn the ropes from uh, some of the older guys like Janny, Nens and Bushy, Maddie, Fordo. I mean they all helped me a ton and kind of made a smooth transition for me. You were able to be a, a pretty great contributor there at the end to help the rail yard dogs to lift that President's Cup for the first time. What was that experience like for you during those last couple of weeks where you guys were, you know, really making that run and really making those memories, what do you kind of look back and reminisce on when you think about that championship? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's, it's something you dream about. You love winning championships, so especially as a hockey player, you know, that's obviously the end goal always. So, I mean, and to do it after being here for a month and a half, I mean, it's a nice uh, icing on the cake for my first year. That was Pepe right there. By the oh, way, I see, really? Pass, yeah. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, no. I mean, obviously it was a great experience and couldn't ask for a better start to my pro career. You come back this year and it's your first full pro season. And one thing I think is always kind of interesting that people don't really see behind the scenes is there's always kind of maybe these, you know, unofficial roles that everyone serves on the team. And one of the official unofficial roles you've got this year, you and Jacob Kelly are the rookie captains. So for people that may have no clue what that means, what, what does it mean to be rookie captain what are some of your your roles and your duties as a rookie captain for this team yeah so me and Kels uh I guess we kind of were in charge of the other rookies so we kind of kind of lay out the uh 
you know, the jobs and stuff for what's needed when we go on the road and stuff and just making sure that, you know, we got everything we need. We're not missing anything. Um, making sure the Normatex boots are, are not being stolen or left anywhere. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and then so basically if anything happens, we kind of take the heat for it, I guess, in a way. But so, yeah, we just, uh, you know, make sure everything's everything's good to go. So your major, when you were at SUNY Oswego, you were a wellness management major. I know that you're only in your first full pro season, and hopefully, as long as you wish to, you've got a lot of hockey still left mm -hmm. in front of you to play. But I'm curious to know maybe kind of what was your thinking in, in choosing that major? What does life after hockey maybe have in store for you? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure my, my official career yet. I was thinking maybe uh, being a firefighter, something along those lines. Um, but obviously, uh, we'll see kind of what happens when I do decide to wrap it up. But, I mean, uh, I think the PGA Tour might be calling uh, <laughs> soon, so we'll see, we'll see what happens there. I mean, that would be a nice lifestyle, but, uh, yeah, we'll see. Kinda, there you go. Well, yeah. well, you heard it here first. If you're, if you're trying to, to tear it up out on the golf course with somebody, <laughs> if you're looking for someone for your tournament team, Alex DiCarlo yeah. is going to be your guy. <laughs> Earlier in the season, as far as maybe the numbers, they, they weren't quite there. But I think everyone has seen – from the first time you got in you know you're a very high iq player very savvy very skilled on offense and has it been anything that you can kind of put your thumb on that's maybe been a little bit differently uh for you that 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 has gone your way as far as this run kind of clicking for you or is it something where you just think you're maybe kind of getting some of those bounces the the plays you've been making are just kind of having the different result now i think uh i think just kind of finding my way here i know i did have a slow start like you said um I think it can kind of weigh on you pretty heavy, especially uh, like right off the start there. But I think uh, just Brem's kind of talking with me and stuff and kind of making sure I know the way I need to play to kind of be successful, I think has helped a lot. And uh, trying to just go to those dirty areas and, you know, be more versatile, I guess, and kind of keep my feet moving. You're not exactly a newcomer to, to Roanoke anymore. You're, you're more comfortable here in town. I'm curious to hear... You know what when your day is done at the rink what are some of the things you like to do some of the places that you may like to go and frequent when you're just going around town yeah so mostly i would say as far as like going around town on the daily um i like to golf kind of like i mentioned there um so if the boys are going or whatever you know i like to I like to play the game and especially with the weather here it's been so nice compared to us we go and even niagara falls back home at this time so i mean being able to golf on on christmas eve is that's just something I, you know, couldn't even dream of. So to be able to do that was just amazing. Um, but I think uh, I like to play video games from time to time. So I think uh, I think that's that's most of my uh, off time as well. Um, and then uh, yeah, it's pretty much talking to my girlfriend. You know, doing some distance. So talking with her a little bit and watching movies and shows and stuff is always nice. So. What do you think is kind of the big key? What's the big message that's going around the locker room right now to kind of try to make sure that you guys continue to have success into the second half of the season? Yeah, I think just uh, staying consistent. I know we've we've had some periods and stuff like that where, you know, Brems isn't happy with us and we're, we're not playing the way we're supposed to be, which is the dog's hockey, and I agree with them 100%. I mean, I think it's hard to, to stay uh, consistent for a full 60, but, I mean, that's what it takes to win in this league, so kind of just keeping it together and playing the way we need to play is, is going to be crucial and hopefully we can uh, come out with some more W's. I just want to kind of leave it open-ended to you. Is there anything that I didn't get to or anything that you want to say to any people, friends, family, fans of the team that, that are back here watching this today? Yeah, I know uh, my girlfriend's going to love watching this, so I'd like <laughs> to say hello to her and my mom and my dad as well. Um, but no, and then just... To the dogs, fans, and community, you know, we love it here. Um, you know, you guys are what drives us, and, you know, we wouldn't be anywhere close to where we were last year and even this year without you guys. So, really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, love my time here. And uh, shout out to Bilster. All right, shout out um, Bilster. Well, yeah. Alex, thank you very much for your time today, man. No Good luck thank to you as we keep rolling through the season. Keep thank it going, you. buddy. Thank you. Driving with the Dogs is sponsored by Haley Toyota the official ride of your rail yard dogs. Visit Haley Toyota online at HaleyHasItForLess.com and stay tuned for more episodes coming soon.